this road I'm driving on in LA used to be free, but now it's 460 to go from here to here, at least in this lane, in this traffic. And this entire section of New York City will soon cost as much as $15 per car per day. Across America, toll roads have been on the rise. From 2003 to 2019, the US saw a 24% increase in the total mileage of toll roads. And a lot of these new toll roads are being implemented in ways that we haven't really seen before. All right, I just got my toll from the trip and it says I owe $14. It might be time we start getting used to this feeling. So what's behind this rise of tolled roads? And are they just making driving more expensive or can they make it better? Every day, 64% of Americans use a car to get somewhere. To do all this moving around, we need a lot of roads. But right now, there's a bit of a problem because the way we've always paid for them is drying up. To help understand what's going on, I enlisted the help of Robert Poole and Adi Tomer, who both are experts in the field who have spent a lot of time thinking and sharing ideas about America's infrastructure. And Robert Poole even wrote this book about America's highways. So there's a few different ways roads get funded in America. First, the giant number of local roads going just a few miles are generally paid for by local property taxes. So you pay for your spot in town and the town builds you some roads. These little streets account for most of the length of American roads, but the majority of miles traveled by Americans are on longer roads, like those between cities and between states. For a long time, like when people rode around in horse-drawn carriages, these longer roads were often toll roads. They're pretty straightforward. Public or private investors come together and build a road somewhere they think people want to go, like between these two communities, and charge for every person who goes on it. Then, if enough people use it, they'll be able to pay off the cost of building the road and maybe even make a profit. There were something like 1,500 turnpikes in the late 1700s and the first half of the 1800s. But when the automobile came onto the scene and the U.S. needed way more roads because people were going way further than they ever had, having tons of toll roads everywhere didn't make as much sense. Oregon came up with the idea of, of taxing motor fuel in 1919, and it really caught on. So the idea of a gas tax is that every car using the road needs gas. So if you charge drivers for this thing they need every time they go on the road, then you're basically charging them for using the road, which is the goal. Then that money goes to state and federal governments who use it to build and maintain the roads and highways. Or at least that was the idea. But things have changed. So state and federal gas taxes are still the biggest way we pay for roads in America. But there are a few main reasons the system isn't working as well as it used to. I'll use California as a case study because it has more drivers than anywhere else in the country, has a hefty gas tax, tons of traffic, and it's where I live. But the story is largely the same anywhere else in America. So the obvious first problem is that cars aren't using as much gas as they used to. In a lot of ways, this is great. And the gas tax actually acted as an incentive for people to buy more fuel efficient cars. But as fuel efficient electric cars become more and more common, we're getting to the point that there's significantly lower or no revenue coming in from some drivers through gas taxes. For example, from its peak in 2002, California's gasoline consumption has dropped by about 50% as the state has enforced strict fuel efficiency standards and pushed people to use electric cars. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that gap either, but the point stands. But of course, this is California, the land of Tesla and the Prius, which has relatively extreme regulation and EV adoption. Across the US as a whole, gasoline usage is potentially flatlining, usage is up and down basically on the same level, but it's not really going down. But the second problem is that as inflation continues to make building roads more expensive, gas taxes aren't keeping up. The federal gas tax has not been raised since 1993, uh, and it's nominal, meaning it does not actually go up or down based on what you see at the pump. So as the value of 18.4 cents has fallen, the federal gas tax has stayed the same 18.4 cents per gallon since 1993. And we all know 18.4 cents won't buy you what it used to. And it's not just inflation that taxes have to keep up with. The roads are relatively getting more expensive to build than everything else we have to buy in the broader economy. Even if the number of gas users is stable, the price of building roads is skyrocketing, faster than inflation. So even if revenue did keep up with inflation, the cost of building a road is rising faster. And raising gas taxes to cover this, just like raising any other tax, is a politically unpopular maneuver. 
So over the years to ease the gas tax shortfall, the government has looked elsewhere to get funding because roads are expensive. For example, the estimated cost to build a new seven mile highway between two toll roads in Orange, California is $423 million. And in Pennsylvania, just a 4.5 mile stretch of road will cost $214 million to rebuild and expand. That's an average of $47 million per mile. All of this is why in Michigan, the state expects to see a gas tax revenue shortfall of about $1 billion a year by 2040. So to fill in this gap, many of these cash-strapped states have looked to toll roads. Michigan's Department of Transportation alone found that tolling just 14 of its busiest highways could generate $1.5 to $2.8 billion annually. Other states like California and New Jersey have already started doing this to fund their road construction and maintenance. Having roads that one pays for while you use them, well, those are age old too, right? We even have the concept of the troll sitting under the bridge. But really we've had significant technological barriers up until about 50 years ago. For example, privately owned innovations like the Easy Pass transponder system has made tolling easier than ever for both drivers and toll operators, as it doesn't require a giant staff of gate lifters or waiting in line. So this all sounds great, if you're an economist or a government. But for you and me, this seems like driving is just getting more expensive, especially on long commutes on tolled routes. So what's the point of paying when traffic can still slow us down? So Americans have kind of woken up to the fact over the past few decades that we cannot just build our way out of highway congestion. That every time you widen a road, inevitably, that road will get congested again. It's something that economists and planners call induced demand. So one of the solutions was to start building single lanes, or sometimes they're multiple in one direction, that we call toll lanes or express lanes, or even sometimes high occupancy toll lanes where we allow people with multiple passengers to ride for free. Just based on a visual analysis of the cars going 60 on the express lanes while everyone else is in bumper to bumper traffic. This is actually crazy how effective this is. It's clear that these special lanes work but only for the people with enough money to spend to go on them. This is why they have the nickname Lexus Lanes. And the lanes raise a bigger question of what the ultimate goal of highway design should be. The key to reducing traffic isn't by adding new roads, it's getting people off of them. One argument for toll roads is that part of their revenue can be invested in alternative transportation options. For example, LA Metro's 25 miles of express lanes on these two roads earned $67 million of revenue in 2022, which they used to buy buses, build transit stations, and construct pedestrian bridges, among other things. But express lanes still aren't quite as intensive as another option. This summer, New York City will be the first city to have a congestion pricing plan. First introduced in Singapore, cordon area congestion pricing, most people just call it congestion pricing, works to reduce demand by increasing prices for cars driving into a busy area. Basically, you'll get a bill if you drive into a certain part of town at certain times of the day. The key here to set up these congestion zones is not only to charge in the right places, but to make sure people have an affordable alternative to driving into the proverbial downtown area. After being implemented in other cities around the world, congestion pricing has led to immediate drops in traffic and increases in public transit use. And we'll likely be seeing congestion pricing in other parts of the country as well. Earlier this year, the US Department of Transportation announced the first $150 million in grants from the Congestion Relief Program, which funds congestion reduction policies across the country. So tolls can provide a three-fold solution to fund roads, manage traffic, and incentivize alternative transportation. But they do also raise concerns for disadvantaged drivers who face quickly rising toll prices. So some cities like New York City or Los Angeles plan to or already have discounts for drivers who earn under an income threshold. However they're funded, roads are an integral part of our economy and mobility, and they need funding from somewhere. Perhaps the best option to solve America's road funding problem is by just charging for every road. One new avenue for funding is now in a trial phase in America. Technology called a vehicle miles traveled fee would basically track everywhere you go and send you a charge based on how much you drove. Oregon and a few other states have already run voluntary programs for VMT to some success. There's very real privacy concerns with that and the need to anonymize the data. But most of us are traveling around with smartphones and we're actually telling our internet service provider, whoever you pay your, your wireless phone bill to, already where you go every day. But VMT does have a benefit no other tolling system can tout. It finally makes roads a one-to-one -one utility. When you use them, you pay. 
Economists are a funny bunch. They fight about little details, but there are some things they all agree on. And that is the idea of charging people as they use any kind of activity that's effectively in short supply.